Let's get it. Let's go. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, and this is another episode of Sake Sundays. Got to say a special shout out to Sake High. Make sure you go and check them out. They're a locally sourced California brand, and they're selling all across the state, so they're doing big things. Today, we have two people here with us. This is my man, Liate. How y'all doing? And this is Marina. Hey, how are you? She'll be co-hosting with me today. So, to start off, let's take a shot. All right. Let's do it. And I'll let you get straight into it. Get right with you. What is the purpose of hitting it on the like, table? It's like a, I don't know, like a sundown type of Yeah, it's like, cheers. Yeah, I never knew why, and like, not everybody does I don't it. Know. I think, I think how you drink is how you drink. I think. And I, you see, I did it because I I'm used to people doing it, but no one told me why. I just whenever I see it, you feel me? It's just like I guess of, you know, you just kind of like you see monkey do, right? Yeah, like, I don't want to be left out or like you know the uh, don't split the, the pole. Oh yeah, yeah. You feel me? Like I used to talk about <laughs> don't split the pole, and now I'm like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on what I'm doing. So like, right. it depends on how big that sidewalk you is, bro. Because honestly, I'm not finna be like ants <laughs> and like march right behind. And sometimes people, like if you take too long, I'm gonna get on the sidewalk. Right. I'm like, like on the street. Like we're, we're gonna have to just like, yeah, yeah, bro, don't crash. Like come on, right. Just walk right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it just depends on the situation. Like if you're going to like, if you're doing something that you need to. But anyway, I'm not sure. But I mean, if somebody does it, then you know it's kind of like everybody when does you it. Happy <laughs> birthday. Some people go cha cha cha. Some people don't. Uh, just, you know, yeah, so do y'all do the the global birthday song, you gotta do or I need to go off? Yeah, yeah. Like the the norm, you know, the standardized happy the birthday. Standard, yeah. Is per usual, right? Yeah. I feel like sometimes it's reversed. Like, what's the right order? Do you do just happy birthday and then you do the remix? Because sometimes I feel like people drop the remix version. Okay, but like, well, what's your? But if I do the remix, though, I'm not doing the original. <laughs> If I hit the remix, I'm not doing the original. So we already did it once, and we used most of the energy for the fun one. Yeah, but that was the one I, that was the one I gave all my energy to right, in the first right. place. Oh, Leonta, tell us about yourself, what you do. Yeah, I mean, so, I'm an all-around creator, I like to think. Um, I think um, in this world of mine that I am still creating, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to be able to express myself in different mediums. I think that's the biggest thing for me right now. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm blessed that those mediums have been modeling and music thus far, um, also doing content creation for brands and stuff like that and being able to really like express myself in that avenue. Um, I think right now, like some big things that I'm, I have going on are like I, uh, just got announced as the creative director for like Style Magazine. Oh, um, dope. We just had our year our year one like launch party um, this previous weekend. And that was just a really, really fun time that I had with, you know, some creative people in the space. And it was just right. um, a very interesting moment for me because like, like creative direction wasn't really what I was thinking of when I got involved with Lex, I think I got involved with her, like, you own a magazine, I want to be on the cover, like, how can we work together to make that happen, you know, type of shit, and, um, you know, because modeling is, like, my heart, like, I love it, like, I yeah, love being able to create ask, crazy photos and visuals. I was going to ask, how did you, like, what did you start with, you said modeling, you said creative directing, you did music, I was going to say, like, what started what were your earliest like forms of self-expression? My earliest, well, so look, peak game. Peak game. <laughs> we may have to load one of these up. <laughs> peak game. Like, um, I grew up in the church, so I've been singing all my life. Okay. Um, and I used to write songs because my parents owned a church when I was a youth. That's I was dope. Like, tyke. I was oh, a little okay. so you grew tyke. Up in the church. I grew up. This list up <laughs> in the church. Like it was, it was the church. Okay. So. Like, I used to write songs for the choir for my mom and stuff, just funny little things, okay. you know? Like, I was just on, I was on that vibe, bro. So that was, like, one form of it with okay. me just expressing that. So that worship. Yeah, worship songs okay. were, like, a big part of my culture back in the day, mm -hmm. right? 
And then, like, when I got into, like, middle school, I got, like, really close with this one dude named Seth. He's the homie. Like, shout out to Seth. That's that. He's getting married in, in uh, like, 24. Congratulations to you and Kai. Y'all the gang, for real. <laughs> Anyways, you know, Seth, he had a dream of photography, like, you know, page that he wanted to create. And, you know, he also did, like car photography and stuff like that and so you know he was like I want to get models too and so he was like dude be my model and I was like Duh. okay bet and so we're in like middle school like we don't know what we're doing right and so we're just you know doing photo shoots it gets to high school you know we're doing better photo shoots just yeah. more concepts just, just being able to do it around. but for me it was like oh I need photos for my Instagram and you yeah. want you want to take content for your Instagram Tip and we're like that's and, and we were at best friends, so it didn't. It right. was like we were hanging out the whole time. Like right. it was just like a good time for both of us, right? Uh, how those first like shoots, couple of shoots work? Like, did you have an idea of, like what you were doing as a model, and did he know yeah, how to use the camera? No, it was just my friend saying, "Hey, can you like wear this sweater yeah. and let me take pictures of you in it?" Yeah. And I was like, "Okay." And did you guys just go to a park? Or? We were just like, yeah, at a park. We were like, um, just. Yeah, just chilling around, and then like when we got into high school, that's when we got to be creative with it. That's yeah. when we were like, okay, let's go to this like abandoned like parking structure, right, and you right, pull right. your car up, and then it'll be raining. And yeah. Now, 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 there's, there's now there was like aesthetics in there, right? Like so, then we started, then we started like piecing together pictures, right? And it was so then it was just much more than what we originally imagined. Right, and then I took a little sabbatical because I went to college and, you know, I wasn't doing as much modeling in college, but actually college is where I got my first paid modeling gig. Yeah. And so that was like a big, big step for me. Right. Because before that point, modeling was just fun. Right. It was just something I enjoyed like doing. Yeah, something yeah. I did with my friend, something I didn't really care, like, too much about, like, what, what came out of it. It was more just for fun. Two questions. When you were in high school... Did you show people? Like, did you tell people that, yeah, I'm a mom? No. Yeah. I just posted it. And then people just be like, oh. They were like, that photo's hard. And yeah. I was like, appreciate it. But it was never like, I'm a model. Yeah, it was, it's not it like was it's just you're like, not claiming that. Just well, yet. yeah, and I mean, Was it like, you just weren't even thinking about it? It was like, we did a photo shoot because it was fun? Like, I think it's because at the time that wasn't the bulk of my identity. Right. I think because I had so many things going on in life Yeah. that model wasn't a title that I necessarily associated with myself. Right. Right. It's because I was, you know, a student. I was an athlete. I liked to sing. I was doing all these things, but play. modeling wasn't like, right. like that seems like that a, wasn't like, at the forefront. Yeah. Though. So it just wasn't something that I would be like, oh yeah, I do this. I do this. Yeah. It was like, just like, something else to add to the list. Yeah. <laughs> like a little resume builder. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what sports so, did you play? Man, I played football, basketball, lacrosse, track, and soccer. Yeah. What the better question would be? What sport did you not play? <laughs> I didn't play yeah. hockey. <laughs> I used to want to play hockey, actually. I didn't. No, I didn't either. Shout I wasn't. I was up. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> My bad to the hockey players. Ain't no hate, but oh no, hockey players go hard, bro. I think we hit each hard. other, bro. <laughs> I was not about that. There was a um, semi-pro team. Person? that was in my town bro and so kids i went to high school with played for them these dudes was grown men bro. like built like grown men bro like fight like, yes yeah. yeah. like the, the <laughs> rest of the right. like y'all work it out that is a good thing right. 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 yeah yeah hockey's a sport <laughs> yeah um but yeah no i played i played all all those sports and i played them like every year so it was like i was doing like two sports a season most seasons which was like super fun but also super stressful. No, right. yeah, yeah. But right. like, you know, I don't know, for some reason, I was able to continue to be able to play sports and be like- You were able to find that balance. Yeah, it was weird, you know? Cause it's kind of like filling you up in different different, different ways. Each one yeah. serves a different purpose, right? Exactly. As far as what it's doing and how it's fulfilling your life, right? And I think it was like, playing so many different sports really like leveled out everything that I was doing. Cause I, I grew like, probably like seven to ten inches in one summer that's crazy oh, like yeah. i was i was i was six one like when i went into middle school okay. that's crazy. so like for me i was super uncoordinated at first <laughs> i was just a long you had to figure your new body out so i had to i had to work at it like there was a yeah. lot of like 
you know, I had to, I was playing different sports and I was getting the hold of different mechanics yeah. right. for each sport, right? Because, right? you know, they're all different, but they no, all intertwine at the end of the day. Right, balance. Mm -hmm. So it was cool. like, yeah, so it was like I was able to do a lot of that stuff, which was cool, which mm -hmm. was really cool. And I think that really balanced me out. I think if I didn't play all those sports, I would have been really uncoordinated <laughs> to this day. <laughs> playing all those sports then, do you still have, like, a very active, like, you feel me, workout regimen? Yeah, I, I tend to go to the gym, I think, three times a week. I dropped it down, like, a, a good amount because um, I played football in college as well. And oh, yeah. It was, like, working out two times a day and all that every day. And so it's, like, after all of that, I was, like, you know, I can, I can go down in time and just really experience a lot more life, right? Yeah. So it's, like, a lot of the things that, you know, when you're – doing all the workouts and that's your whole, you know, focus. Some of those things that you miss out on are the, you know, going out with friends and uh, like after work happy hours that right. you don't get to do because you're like working out or stuff right. like that. So, you know, I've been trying to really experience that side of life as well so that I can find those balances and enjoy the both sides of the spectrum. Right. Um, because I feel Which like is important too, right? Yeah. That's, before you know it, time goes by and you've missed out on certain experiences that you should have, you know, kind of cherished when, as it's meant to happen in your life. Oh, uh, yeah. 100%. I feel like it's really important, especially like having as many different roles as you do and like being active because sometimes like you work, right? You have a, yeah, you yeah. work and then you have all your creative jobs as well. Mm -hmm. you feel me? So being able to balance not only the time, but like the mental state, you yeah. feel me? Because like once you're in the create mode, everything goes and it's easy to do. But then once you have to go back to work mode, sometimes it's like you don't have the same focus you did. And sometimes, it, at least for me, I won't say for everybody, I've had times where it's like the things I was paying attention to were different than the things I have to pay attention to in this role. And I spent so much time looking at how things looked aesthetically, I forgot about the pace of keeping up life. I gotta go back to keeping up and stop making it pretty because this isn't a pretty job. This is a quick job. You feel me? So it's like having that background of all those sports helped with having to balance. You feel me? Um, I think it, I think it did. I think for some reason, like what I did when I was younger really prepared me well for juggling these two different careers because that's what they are. These are two separate careers that I'm running at the same time, right. and I think that it's really cool because. You know, on one side, like, I'm in a very corporate tech sales job with a uh, definitive hierarchy where I'm at right. the bottom, right. Right. working right. As, a, right. as a grunt, trying to get right. to the day, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. but like, there's still a insane amount of freedom to what I get to do in each day, and success is totally apparent about upon, like, the effort that I put in right. and what I get out of it, right. so it's like, I can't blame anybody for anything. It's like, in this business, it's like, if I succeed, it's on me. Right. So it's like, it's really cool, like, being able to have right. that Having structure that control of and control. what yeah. exactly you're wanting to take on and commit to and, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like really cool having that side. But then there's also the other side where it's like, you know. Really the creative where the real freedom comes into play. Well, yeah, right? there's the other side where it's like people understand what I think about, right? right. Instead of what I do. Like right. they understand like my brain right. and like kind of how I how I create and stuff. And so then there's that side where it's like like how do you put this into words other than to just make the picture or other right. than to create the song or other than to have this you know, pull up, right? That's the only way that I can express this idea that I have in my head. Right. And so having that side as well where it's like I have made a name for myself and like, you know, I'm in rooms where people do know like my work and have seen what I can do and right. understand like the level of creativity I am to be to be given the pleasure of being the creative director for Lexile Mads going on, like like I don't I don't take that lightly right. like that's like a heavy burden on my heart and like in in the most positive of ways right mm -hmm. to be able to say like yeah like I'm able to work this job right and 
do this career and create and be a right. person and be, be this, that is something that I take like heavy. Right. right. I love being able to, you know, be in an environment. I love being able to support people. I love being able to create. Like I'm gonna tell y'all right now, the things that me and Lex have building out for these next this next year for the magazine. We're like gonna create a platform for people to, you know, get articles written about them, blog posts written about them, people to get in the magazine, get covers. Like we're gonna, mm -hmm. you know, get the people those publicities, make SEO optimized like blogs about people so that they can get that, you know, that reach that they're looking for. Really right. just trying to create a platform so that everybody can thrive and that we can all just That's create so together, right? And it's like, but we wouldn't have got there if we hadn't grinded for this last seven to nine months that we've known each other right and right. it's like it was really i think i was like fully fortunate to meet lex in the earlier stages of this magazine because you know i met her at a time where she needed some help i had skills because like we said multifaceted we want right. to be renaissance right. men right we want to be mm -hmm. renaissance people right high school. you have to know right. you have to know right. how to do right. all right. kinds of things yeah. to learn how to be to and it's also about selling yourself, right? Because it's like, like I wasn't a journalism major. I didn't go right, to right. you know school to write. Like right. I just knew how to write. I knew how to operate blogs. I knew how to you know create. I knew what people wanted to see, right? And so it's like also learning that I have to position myself in the right positions to get out the outcomes that I want, right? right? Like I had to tell her like, hey, these are the things that I've been able to do that translate to your industry that I can be an asset to you. Well, let's work. That's right? something to touch And really, on. you know, make yourself valuable. You know, I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. So that just seems like it was all those ships were meant to fall, how they, you know. Uh, like the, how do you get the opportunities? Because that's something I feel like a lot of people wonder. You feel me? It's like, all right, I want to model. How do I become a model? Or I want to be a photographer. Or I want to make a song or be a singer. Like, just talk about a little bit about like one or two what things that you did to put yourself in the, the position. Starting points, yeah. steps to kind of get there. Okay, so I have two answers for this. One of them is cookie cutter. One of them is direct. Which one do you <laughs> want first? Apply both. Both. It, both. Yeah, it, 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 applies it, it, it applies to everything. It applies to everything. It applies to anything. Which one do you want first? Both. Which do the cookie cutter. cutter one. The cookie cutter one is like. You just gotta try. You gotta. You just gotta try. Put in the effort. Like you, honestly, at the end of the day, <laughs> just like, like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody's gonna believe in you. At the end of the day, if you don't, okay. if you don't yourself put forth steps towards it, nobody will. Nobody's gonna work as hard as you. Nobody's gonna put as much effort in as you, and nobody's gonna care as much as you will. So yeah. the cookie cutter answer is you just do. Yeah. Just take that step. Just do it like Nike. Listen. The other one is ask. Ask for what you want. Nobody in this world gets by with a closed mouth. A I mean, closed mouth never gets fed. You have nothing to lose. Only everything to gain. And I literally say that all the time. Like when I feel like I get discouraged or I'm questioning or doubting myself and making a decision, like I just what do you have to lose? And Nine times out of ten, if I just tackle that head on and I get over that, like I'm gonna, like it works out in my favor. So it's just kind of taking that initiative to just do it. No, a lot of it is just like getting in your own way it. by being in your head about right. it. It's right. like we ask, we ask a lot, but we don't ask people and we ask the wrong questions. We ask the we what if this doesn't, like, yeah. or what if yeah. I can't, or what if they say no. You yeah. feel me? So, no, you're right. You do have to be able. To verbalize it and but it's, brave yeah, enough to. But it's it's a little bit more than just verbalizing. It's like verbalize it, but back it up. Hey, I want to be your creative director. These are the things that I do that, that can translate to being a creative director, and be right? And then that's this is where it comes into because not only did I just, you know, not only did I provide value to you, I also said here's the direction I'm looking to go. Right. This is what I can bring to Giving you. Giving you a different this, perspective. Because now you don't have to think about these things. Right. I, I put it out for you. Right. I told you what I want. I told you what I'm doing. So then anything that I do going up to that, because it may not be the time. I may ask for it. And you're like, hey, right now is not the right time. Yeah. Right. You know, right. right now is not going to happen. 
I really understand it. I see you, right? But that next task you give me is going to test me for that. And you're going to subconsciously give me a task that tests me in the field that I'm asking you to be in because you are like, well, you know, it would be easier if somebody like him would just take that role. So if I can just give him tasks that do that and they do it well, then maybe I'll consider it, right? Because it may not be a right away thing. I may ask for something, but it may not be available, right? But it's going to be in your mind, understanding that that's something that I'm dreaming for. It's something I'm going towards. That's the work that I want to put in, right? And I'm manifesting that. Patience and perseverance is what you just said pretty much. Right, though. basically. Like you gotta stay consistent in the line of work. Consistency stay consistent. too. Like Consistency you can say you want thing. it, you can ask for it, you can say I did this, and then say, all right, well, cool. And then you come back and then say, oh, yeah, I saw you did that, what, what else? Nothing else? Then you don't really do that. Like, right. You were hoping something would happen. That's not what you wanted to do or you would have kept doing. You feel me? Yeah. It's like, just do this. Do the thing. 100%. Shout to that. Shout to that. Shout to that. And would you say, I think um, we were talking about this before. When you're trying to get started in these fields, do you think it's best just right off top like get a manager like how do you find your gigs or how did you start mm -hmm. off did you need to find an agent and and go that route or were you able to kind of find and navigate your own way to find opportunities and, and work so that's a great question um i think that in terms of getting booked um i I brought a lot of myself into that aspect, so I did not get signed right away. Um, I went the route of being independent at first, and I think what that bred for me was a lot of opportunities to learn from people, right. um, which was cool, um, and all, but in terms of like making this like a steady career or like getting paid for it, going independent sometimes doesn't work. Um, right. I think for me, I was very fortunate that um, I learned early that just being a model wasn't going to cut it. That and I we're talking more. about modeling independently. Yeah, modeling right. independently. Okay. It's like just modeling independently wasn't going to work. If I wanted to be independent and model, I also had to be a content creator. Right. Because I had to learn that the, the way that you get higher paying jobs independently is to provide higher value than who they would get originally. Right. So I had to leverage like, hey, like, yes, I will do a photo shoot for you. I will get you 15 pieces of content, still photos, right? I'll give you four SEO optimated, like, like little excerpts that you can post up for like captions. I'll give right. you like, um, for reels that you can throw up there that are going to be tailored provide towards value. your audience, right, right. right? I provided that value and then that was what really differentiated myself in that space, right? And I think that helps a lot when, it, when you're building like a community with these brands. I also recognize that the be biggest way to be independent and make this happen is to go from you to the brand, right. not from you to an agent to a brand, right? Right. Um, I feel like, like it's very different sometimes, right? So like if you're doing like a major brand commercial, right? You want an agent, someone that's going to facilitate that. They're going to monitor the money. They're going to make sure everything's going steady. They're going to make sure you're taken care of. They're going to get you set up. Because right. I do have an agency, right? Shout out to Onyx Unity, Lindsay, you're the goat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just know that, Lindsay, you're the goat. Onyx Unity, shout out to them. But you know. It's like having, having that agent to monitor all that, get things right for you, set things up. It's like, takes all the stress out. Right. But like there's things your agent won't do, right? That you're gonna have to learn how to do, right? And I think that if you're a model, if you're a creative, if you're a talent, if you're a person in this space, in the entertainment space, if you don't know how to draft up a contract, you are severely, bro, severely, the thing severely is, bro, do you hurting know how yourself. How many people don't know how to forget draft, read, man, read, not even know the terms? You feel me? It's like yeah. this term, like I don't say even. I agree, but I don't even say if you can't write your own contract. If you don't understand the terms, 
If you don't understand the different parts of whatever it is that you're working in, if it's a song, you're publishing. Your songwriting credit. If you don't understand how to break those down, you need to go back to school. And school can be YouTube. School can be a book. You can teach yourself. When it comes to photos, like you were saying, I will provide you this many reels, this many videos. There might be raw content as well. You have to account for all of that. If you only say these reels and these videos, but you send a whole raw folder, these are mine now. You shot these for me. Like, you have to be smart about what it is you're getting into. And it's okay to purpose and give away, but no. Be purposeful. purposeful. Right, right. and even if you do give stuff away, write down that you gave it away. (laughs) Remember that. Just write it down. Because there could be a time when you have to say, you need to pull hey, out your up. <laughs> I, I need you to see, this is what I gave you for right. free, so don't try to charge me for something else. Like, you know, we, we offset costs for something, right? Yeah. If you do a deal with somebody and you're like, hey, we're going to do this for this and this is what you're going to pay me for this service. And they try to back out. Who's that contract up? Stop right. playing with them. And because also- at the end of the day... It don't the light the writing don't lie right so right. here's what I say be about what you do be about what you say write that contract today. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a contract, if you just approach people with the fact that all right, let me write this up and get it back to you. So, right. Oh, oh yeah. You feel me? It's like all right, bet. Like right. you're you're serious. Yeah. I didn't know it was that serious. Like I thought we just had to agree in this text message. No, bro. I'm showing up on this date at this time for this much, and I'm giving you this. It's in writing. Right. So tomorrow after we finish, don't ask me for something that wasn't in writing. So oh, shout to that. Get it in writing. And if you do, if you do, check the contract. Check the contract. I'm gonna just keep doing it because we started. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what has been one of your favorite like? projects or opportunities in any field. Okay, so there's some I can't speak about. Understand. <laughs> Contract. Yes. <laughs> Contracts. Thank you. Contracts. <laughs> there's some that I can't speak about because, you know, some of them aren't released yet. Yeah. Shout out to Onyx Unity because they're not released yet, but they will be. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but I think some of the biggest projects that I've like really been working on is like, this one with Phi Athletics. Um, okay. This is this uh, brand ran by this like wonderful lady, Ayo. And um, I've just been really blessed to know her and work with her and to be able to, um, you know, she, she goes and travels to many places to do fashion shows and I've been lucky enough to be, you know, one of her models that she's brought with her. Oh, beautiful. Um, and so, you know, I've done a lot of shows in LA with her and I've done some shows in New York with her um, and so it's just been like a real blessing to be able to be in that space um, mm-hmm. and so you know I really hold that that brand close to my heart um, I fuck with them um, but like I've also just been able to do some really really cool like photo shoots like I've done like I'm lucky enough to say that I've done like two photo shoots with my girlfriend (laughs) and my girlfriend is not a model and she does not like modeling. No. But that's exciting to be able to share that experience. But for me, it's like, it's been a great experience that I was able to do that with her. It's a a different level of intimacy too. Like, welcome to my world. Yeah. You know, it's like sharing this with me, even though it's outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. It's like a give and take. And it's like one of them she got for me. And Aww. she was in it because she loved to be with me. So it was like it was like one of those things where I was like, wow, like that's, like those are special to me, yeah. and I'll never let, like let those little treasures. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like there's stuff like that, but then there's also like, you know, just like I said, being able to travel to New York for modeling, um, to model for a brand that like I know the owner, the owner knows me, knows right. what I'm creating. I'm like creating content for her as well, so that she'll have like you know, all kinds of this, you know, materials, just stuff that I'm like really excited to do. Right. How do you feel about New York? Oh, man, New York was something different. You like it? <laughs> I love now are you, are you from, are you California based? Like you're, I'm take it York. back, cause I'm like, hold on, where is? <laughs> so you were born in Washington. Yeah, I was born in Washington. I grew up in Sacramento. 
And okay. So it was like, I hope going to do it tomorrow. Um, I think I'm glad I moved to California. Um, okay. I like the sun. I love the sun. Bruh. When did you move to California? I moved when I was about 10. Sacramento? Yeah. It ain't sunny? It's sad. Sacramento? Sunny? Okay, okay. And then what brought you to LA? At what point in your life did you come down? So I went to Cal Poly Slow. Okay. What is that? For a school. Uh, it's college. Okay. It's um this D1 university. Okay, um, I said, what's that? It's D1. Set, 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 <laughs> set, and set ah! in California. <laughs> I said, what's that? This is D1 university. My bad. I ain't know. No, no, no. <laughs> I play sports, you forgot. <laughs> we talked about that in the previous. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I went there for school and such. Um, and living there, I really was trying to figure out where I wanted to go next. And, you know, I knew it wasn't Sacramento just because I had started there. And I wanted to go somewhere where I would be able to be able to express myself creatively. Be fully appreciated and sought out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it was like it was also like a, a break from my athlete identity. Yeah. Right. Right. Because right, right. like I had grew up with that as like a main factor and in how I carried over. myself. You feel like, like people, earlier how you had said that wasn't the main. Exactly. You had worded it so well at that point, but you were like, sports for a while was your main. Yeah, it was the main part of my sports were the main part of my. Did identity. people like yeah. see you as an athlete? The bulk. Like, so yeah. The bulk of your identity. Yeah. 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 So it was like that was definitely the 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 front side of that at, at the time. And so, you know, being able to move out here was definitely a, a complete change from that because then now I'm known as the creative here, right? right who played sports, it's right? right? So it's, it's, it's right. different, you it's know. a complete opposite, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then it's like, you know, Which being able to, so refreshing, you don't have <laughs> to carry the weight that you have right. by being and it's like, you know, I go back and it's fine. Like I see like old at, like old teammates and stuff like that that are still in SAC, thriving, living their lives. And I'm they like, that's great. You're a different individual. No, you're but like a different I, I, a whole different yeah. mindset on this side over here now, you know? So it's like, just, just about how things create and how they work out. It's just been like changing, honestly. Yeah. But I, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy being able to do that in this space and have right. those different identities and be able to like switch brain functions, I would say. Yeah. Um, as someone kind of going back to, cause you, again, you started young, you started in middle school, right? Yeah. Um, as someone who kind of just started with friends for fun, modeling and taking pictures and stuff. And as someone who doesn't know how to pose at all, <laughs> how did you, um, like, how did you get comfortable? Like, did you just know off the bat, like, I'm just going to figure it out or were you, was it an awkward phase of trying to figure out how you wanted to pose or, you know, kind of gaining attraction <laughs> posing so, in pictures? I think what I'll say to that is I think I was very lucky that... I was so I'm, photogenic. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I'm, I mean... Yes! Like, no, I'm just, I'm yes. really trying. Yes. Yes. I I was, I was <laughs> insane. <laughs> I will say I am very photogenic, <laughs> but no, I'm just very lucky that I have the imagination I do. I hear you. Because what, what happens is, like, realistically, I just have a really vivid imagination, and I'm like, this shit would look cool if I did this. Yeah. Right. Let me right. I, I, work with, that. I work with brands that, that I think fun. that I would look cool in their clothes, yeah. and then I think about, like, how their clothes would look posed, and what character. Sometimes I think about this, I'm like, what character would I see wearing these clothes and how would I see them posing? And then I embody that. Like a yeah. character, you, like think of, you think of a it brand. Could be, like it could be either way, it is acting. I take, on, the brand. The brand is is I take on the brand. The brand is what I am at this moment. How does the brand want to be perceived? Right, so then I'll look at like, you look at a cartoon and you're like, oh, you see that main character does that signature pose all the time and it looks so tough. Right, and you're like, they're yeah. wearing whack ass clothes, but what if they were wearing this? He's like, all right, like, and then you hit that pose in your head, you embody that character yeah, in the cool, yeah. slick look back. Yeah. It don't matter what the I mean, pose is, like, like, but sure. like at that point, it's like it's much more than just a photo, right? Now it's a story. You're selling because you're there's more to it than you're bringing that. Hey, this dude is wearing clothes. It's this dude is imitating this 
this person from this show giving this energy yeah. about this that acquired yeah. this brand that You're matches this. this dream or this facade, you know. And can I just say how inspiring that is as someone, you know, as a creative and as an artist, as someone who has so many ideas that ultimately are only ideas and never really get acted on. To hear you say that they all start off with, you know, creativity that I think we all have, have, but when you have those thoughts and you have those inspirations and those ideas, to act on them, to actually pursue them, to actually reach out to whomever or wherever you need to to get it done and to, to, to bring it into fruition. Like, that's so inspiring and that's how you do it. And that's how you manifest and that's how you create your dreams and you, and you, you know, bring things to life and it makes me just feel like damn yeah, like girl all of the things like every idea every thought every freestyle every little bit of choreo that I imagine and I don't just take the time to actually put it out there it could have really like picked up and you know I could have really brought it to life so I commend you for that because I think that's um like the main factor that really separates people from really obtaining their their goals and the success they can have in life and a lot of it is just like doubting yourself and questioning yourself and right. saying later. Being your own obstacle. I think yeah. 100% of the success that I've attained is because I just did it when I didn't think I was ready. Just doing it. Just acting. Kind of being impulsive, right? 100%. Like being slightly and impulsive and just doing it without thinking. Sometimes that'll risk. benefit What do you, you think is the biggest risk that you've taken in a creative field? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> the biggest risk that I've taken in a creative field. Or like a creative You're endeavor. Like creative <laughs> endeavor, like I'm spending my last five hundred dollars to Or fly something out really bold, like, like or just something an bold, idea something you, really you bold. reach out to someone like, okay, this might be really crazy or I might see, you know, overly ambitious. Like you didn't you think forward. it was gonna happen or it was gonna work and whatever you did was exactly what you should have done. I think um I think that would have to be this like style max right. thing, you know. Honestly, like this is what I can do for you. Cause like it, it really just, it really just started off on some like, oh, 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 yeah, that was a good one though. So he said, so you were saying that your greatest risk was probably getting into this magazine, right? Yeah, like it wasn't really like a risk in the terms of like, you know, Having oh, if I, didn't, if I did this, I would lose everything, right? But it was like a risk in terms of like putting myself out there. Um, right. I think that, you know, as a creative, you know, sometimes we guard our, our creations very, very yeah. closely. Um, and to our own demise, right? Yeah, to our, to our own, own demise. Yeah. Sometimes we're like, hey, I don't want anybody. We're our own gatekeepers, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like, I have all of this that I want to share, but ultimately I'm just going to keep it to myself for whatever the reason may be. Exactly. Ultimately it comes down to probably fear, right? Fear of rejection or fear of whatever. Will they like this? Right? Is this what I should do? Right. Should I sound like this? And right. then we go into these things and then, you know, a big, like, and here's a big reason of why I haven't released music in a while, and I'm sad, last time to, I'm sad to say it. It's, We're been gonna like, it's been like seven months, but... Seven uh, months for no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm sad no. to say it because I've been, making, I've been making these very awesome, like, pieces, and it's just been like, you know, because what you do is you, like, go into these communities of people that, you know, like all create and you guys are all trying to create together and then you're getting feedback from people and sometimes you disagree with the feedback but you also are in these spaces where you respect the people that you're talking to so then you get the feedback and then you're like okay I want to like kind of work on it because I trust you but I also trust my vision and kind of like who would like this thing. like if it works like I'll I'll try to incorporate Question. it tidbits and if it catches then cool if not then yeah how many songs have you released what only one? Yeah. How many songs have you recorded, like, since being, you feel me, older? You started really young. Yeah. Older. For me, I started recording when I was, like, 16. I won't play anything before I was, like, 22 for people anymore. <laughs> like, you feel me? Yeah, so I think I have personally recorded about 13 songs. Okay. 
And I think that it's been very, it hasn't been enough songs at all. And the reason for that is the only downside to having so many different things that you're doing is that you have to split your time. Between right. You have to do the thing consistently. Because, and, and if you're someone who goes into something, you know, um, wholeheartedly, you become fully absorbed, right? At least yeah. speaking for myself, like, and so I can feel you when you're like, music kind of gets put on on hold because if I'm focusing on one area, I'm kind of all in, you know? Um, yeah, there's I, that side, but there's also the side of like, you know, getting studio time is hard. Like, you have to get it on their their schedule oh. when they have time <laughs> but it's also it costs right? right it's like so right now like that's my biggest thing. thing is like i need a home studio that's funny because i wasn't right. going to be able to create on other people's time like i need right. to be able to create when i'm feeling creative because it's like you know i could wake up in the middle of the night and be like damn i can't go back to sleep i have this song in my head and but i can't hit them. up somebody and say let me go to your studio right. Right. and record me i have to sit there and be like damn let me write this. And then yeah, sometimes I would say videos. sometimes writing a song is so much better than going in with the idea unwritten. Because you can rehearse it, you can practice, you can get everything out of the way. You mean as far as going in the studio? And, and then when, you know. by the time you go to record it, like, you know, like, it's like a recipe. Sometimes a song Absolutely. is a recipe. Well, you, so it's like you can't just go straight you into gotta the have a concept, and start please. cooking. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can just go in the kitchen and you can just grab it's... this and you can grab that and make right. I'll make some chicken and I got this chili pepper flavor I've never used and I'm gonna put it on it because I know how to make chicken and I know this is good. So you can go in with a concept because you right. already you feel me you built that muscle you know how to cook you know it's good. Yeah. And then other times you gotta follow the recipe. But you don't know the recipe because it's yours, you feel me? You're making it. So you gotta test how much flour, how loud, how much sugar, how fast, how much water, what's the cadence, you feel me? And make it sometimes. So like, sometimes not being able to run straight in the studio helps you save it more, not save, but make a better song. Something that's more cohesive and I will say that- I feel both, yeah. Yeah, I It will, works both ways. I will say, I mean, it, either way, either, however you create is, I'm sure once you get, you know, you have the end result to hide itself. But um, I will say that going in prepared with something, I mean, the majority of the time, I would assume that's what you want, right? Because you want to properly utilize no, your studio time. Sometimes and, I want to go in and but I'll break this. I'm on both sides. Like, sometimes you I'm want to just restyle. I'm on both yeah. sides because I understand what you're saying, especially when studio time is so goddamn expensive. What is expensive? I want to go. When, I, when, I, when, 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 when yeah. you're going to studio time, yeah. you got to you gotta yeah. come no in with your concept. Ways. But now, like that, I'm into the market of getting my home studio. I'm on this side where it's like, no, I want to go into, I want to go into the studio when I'm feeling creative because maybe I just hum a fucking tune no, and save that tune song. for later. But I have a whole tune and then. Two weeks later, I'm like, hey, I remember that tune I hummed to that. Let me write to that now, right? Yeah. But I just want to be able to have the, that memory. The, the oh, time to be able to be yeah, able right. the voice memo. Right. And right. then you go to the studio <laughs> with it prepared, right? right? It's the same yeah, thing. It's the same it's thing. Just it's just a matter of convenience. Yeah. Right? Like, if you want something that's more, you know. It's like you got to sit on it either way, but it's like either you either. Yeah. You know, go to the studio or like have industry quality stuff. And I think, you know, it's a matter of circumstance too, because I've been in sessions where it's been, you know, a six hour blocked out session. We kind of worked on the main stuff that we came in prepared to work on. And now we have time to just try to write something new, da da da. And then yeah. you have, you know, you have that opportunity, that space, uh, that freedom to create something. And then that's, you know, a whole other. And some of my favorite songs have been. Freestyle in the moment on the no, spot, yeah. but you know, I just, I think mentality-wise, you're gonna be prepared. It just depends, I guess, yeah. on the circumstance, right? And I think it depends on what you have, also, because like you know, I totally had gone to the studio with one concept in mind, and my. The engineer that was there was like, hey, listen to this beat. Shows me a beat, and I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it. I write right there on the moment. We write something up, but like, I think most of the time, I try to go into the studio yeah. session with a song like. Prepare, like, you know, out, like had the work at least the, the first draft. Just go in and be like, all right, what are you doing today? Because yeah. <laughs> it just do the, it. No, people do. People do it. And they be wasting money. People be wasting money. They say, 
I found this beat on YouTube. Can you download it? Hey, but they always. <laughs> you're like, bro, download you it right now. You can say that? Yes. Bro, like, you can yes. obviously download it right to that thing first. Bro, I've been in touch. You found it on YouTube. Came in. Yeah. And yeah. said, yo, can you pull up YouTube? I found this beat. It's called this one. And they write to it right there? Fuck right, freestyle. I mean, that's different. Are they rappers? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's that's different sometimes. Sing. I sing, bro. Not, <laughs> I sing, bro. You're not gonna have singers go. He said, like, "Are they rappers?" Let's just pull up this beat and let's just go. Like, bro, yeah, I like I like to I like to you know it's like I think like singing and rapping have different vibes. No, I feel like I with rapping, that. like you can just put bar for bar on some bitch and then it just works. Like, but with singing, I think like you can you can freestyle a melody, but like. If you really want that thing to catch, you gotta yeah, sit there and think yeah. about it. I gotta put, I gotta put some sauce on it. Like, who am I speaking to with this line? God damn it! Like, listen, we can't just be having trash. We need content. We need. She didn't have and since trash. we're going there, since we're going there, okay. Now let's let's delve into this whole music. Video, okay, now we're okay? in the music side. Music side. Um, I, you know, because this is this is know, the side. This is yeah. what intrigues me. Um, so as an artist, yeah. when did you? When did you decide to take that um, take that seriously and kind of identify yourself as a musical artist and what type of music you wanted to do? Like, what what would you say your genre would be? And um... so I would say that I started taking it seriously in college as well. Same time amidst right. playing sports. Yeah, mixed, which amidst was, playing which sports. Which was your, your, the bulk of your identity. The so time. yeah, while I was <laughs> playing, while I was playing sports in college, I realized, hey, this is like a job, and it's not right. as fun as I like as it used to be. Like this is not really what I want to do for the rest of my life, but this right. is something I enjoy now, right? So that's when that started to dissipate from my identity, and then the music and modeling came in. And, and this was, was like, before or after you realized, okay, being an independent model isn't going to cut it on its own. Well, so being an independent model isn't going to cut it on its own was like a realization a couple months into, into L.A. Okay. So that was kind of where that was. But like before that, it was more of like, I just wanted to like see what I was able to do. Kind of mm -hmm. like a creation, bulk creation vibe. Um, so that was the rest of college, and so like I got to this point where I had made a couple of songs throughout college with friends, um, but they were never like with the intent to release. Like these were right, all just like I think the first time I made a song was freaking shout out to Jr. Cademan and Jules. I was literally in the dorms getting a haircut, and hey. as I'm getting a haircut, the homies were making a song, and they were like. Yo, you rap? And I was like, I see. Yeah. Question <laughs> mark. Well, no, I was just like, they, well, they were like, do you, they were like, do you make music? And I was like, yeah, I do. And they're like, all right, you want to hop on this? And I was like, fuck it. So <laughs> yeah. that's how, that's how yeah. So then I, I hopped on the track. And we liked it. We thought it was fun, whatever. And then we were like, let's do it again. And so we just met up a couple more times, and that's when we started creating. And then. You know, I had a friend who, or I, I like, we posted it on our stories, but never like released it, that mm -hmm. stuff. It was just like real fun stuff that we had, like in the backlog. My friend Drizzy Vic, he shout Vic, out to Drizzy Vic. That's the name. Yeah. Shout out to Drizzy. I like that. Shout hey, shout out Drizzy Vic. Vic. Just a friend. Him. Uh, uh, see, I almost skipped it. I almost skipped it that time. But. Um, he, he was the reason like I actually released my first song. Um, I had talked to him a couple of times about making making something together. Um, I think he's such a talented rapper. Um, he's very like he has this like Bay Area funk to him. Mm. Is he from the Bay? I think he is. Let's hope so. We got, got that, that Bay Area funk. He, nah. he living in the Bay right he now. The bay. He actually just he dropped a song with Dr. Pharaoh, so fuck with my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck with my nigga Drizzy Vid. He up there. Um, but basically, like, you know, he was just really, he was the one that was like, bro, you need to release a song. Like, let's do it. Let's, like, let's do it right now. And I was like, all right, bet. Like, I'll do it, you know? And it was honestly the perfect timing because by the time we released the song, that was right when we graduated. That was right when I moved. 
moved to uh, LA, and then it was like first week I was in LA, I was at open mics performing yeah. this song. Yeah. Didn't even know yeah. about it. Wasn't even that wasn't even a part of my concept. But because I had released the song, I was able to be outside promoting it. That's funny, bro. And performing it right, and so I really got my first performance at the something dope for the people stage. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. It was dope. It was dope yeah. for the people. You know what's something funny though? I met you at a performance, G. Yeah. I had no clue up until this point. Like, you feel me? Like, I'm a model, mom. You feel me? Like, music wasn't the forefront. Literally, it was like, oh, he's about to go on stage. Is what I was like, who? And I was like, all right, bet. So I thought you were a musician. You feel me? And I'm not saying you're not a musician, but I thought the musician was like one of your focused forefronts. That yeah. he thought that was the bulk. <laughs> no, no, and I think that's that's a big that's a thing that I I, I deal with a lot, right? Is because like I think sometimes you you're around other creatives and they want you to stick in one lane. Bro, that part. And people try to hold. But you, you back. can't hold me back. But I think I, I one of the things that I've I've dealt with in this space. A lot of people are like. Hey, you should do one or the other. Like, focus on it, do this. And I'm like, for me, it's like I just want to create. Not just that you know for people being threatened yes. because they're not multifaceted. Like, you know, not everybody can do everything. No. we try. <laughs> and when they see that, they, it's a, I'd be jealous too. I'd be like, yeah, but how you do it? You know who said it does? Jersey Drake. Jersey Drake. Quote. He said, "Pick a lane, pick a lane. That's all I ever heard. I'm just trying to swerve." Without hitting these curves. Uh, that is a bar. That is a bar. Listen. That's real life how I, that's really that's real life how I move. Honestly, if there's one thing that I would leave with right now is like I'm just trying to create my own lane. Like at the end of the day, I just wanna find people that fuck with me. And you know, if you fuck with me, you fuck with me. If you don't fuck with me, like, you know, there's other people out there. Right? But what I'm gonna do is my creative vision, if you fuck with that, then you fuck with me. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, none of my songs sound the same, but they're all gonna have a piece of me in it. Right? I like to create different things and I like to surprise people and just the randomness of it is what breeds that that greatness that I feel like I have, right, and that I'm striving to attain. Right. Right. And that's the joy that I wanna spread out. It's like it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Like the concepts isn't the concept is concepting. Can I just you say, know, you know, for these artists, can I just say, stop trying to put us in, in a in a box, okay? I'm tired of having to pick a genre and like, st I'm not gonna pick one, okay? I'm, I want to create what I want. I want to be as versatile as possible. Listen.